We're going to start week seven off by talking about the endocrine system. Um, we're just going to dump all these videos in. Um, remember that during this week, there's no class in person, no lab in person, no assignments due. Okay, but that also means that you have twice as many things due during the following week as you normally do. Okay, so just to start off, um, we're going to talk about the two main categories of hormones, or at least the way we're going to look at them from an exercise standpoint, and just compare and contrast. But to start off, what's the function of the endocrine system? All right, and as we talked about in human phys, it's to secrete hormones. Um, it's a form of long-term or long-distance, not long-term, but long-distance communication. And ultimately, it's helping to coordinate bodily functions. Now, with regards to this, we can classify hormones in many ways, um, but for this class, we're going to just keep it pretty simple. We have steroid hormones and non-steroid hormones, and ultimately what determines if they're a steroid or non-steroid hormone is their um, chemical composition, and this chemical composition also determines how um, they work. So steroid hormones, these hormones are lipid or fat-soluble. Okay, so like cholesterol. And so this is important because it just allows them to diffuse directly into the cell membrane. Remember, we talked about fat-soluble vitamins uh, a couple weeks ago. Same type of thing with steroid hormones. They can just go right through. All right, so primarily the hormones that are produced by the gonads as well as the adrenal cortex. So these include but are not limited to testosterone, estrogen, cortisol, and aldosterone. On the other side, we have non-steroid hormones, so they're not lipid-soluble, so it's more difficult for them to cross the cell membrane. They can't just go right through. And so these are actually produced from amino acids or something called peptides, which is just lots of amino acids put together. All right, and so we've got steroid and non-steroid. And you look at non-steroid, they're essentially they're more of a protein base because that's what amino acids and peptides make up proteins. Okay, and so when it comes to hormones, well, we want to talk a little bit or understand a little bit about how secretion works and these concepts of upregulation and downregulation. So when we think about hormone secretion, this is something that has to occur rapidly. Okay, life and what's going on in your body is constantly changing, and especially if you think about it from a hormone standpoint. These hormones are released from one part of the body, but they end up going all throughout the body. And so we have to re be able to respond to, to those signals quickly. All right. And as a result, the secretion of hormones is, is very irregular. It, it depends on so many things as to what's going on. And what causes the regulation or the, the release or the uh, where we stop releasing it is due to feedback loops. Okay. It's important to note as well that some hormones actually cause the release or stop the release of other hormones. But again, this is all maintained via feedback loops, okay, whether positive or negative, um, ultimately trying to maintain homeostasis. So one of the things that you have to remember is that just because you have a lot of a hormone floating around, that doesn't mean that you're going to have a lot of that effect, Okay. If you just have a hormone but no receptor, the hormone can't do anything. The same is true as if you've got lots of receptors but no, ho no hormone, then nothing is going to happen as well. Okay, and so we need to have both in order for some sort of response to happen. And we can alter the number of um, receptors that are available. And so downregulation, all that means is we're getting rid of receptors. Receptors aren't constantly there. Um, and so we can, you know, the cell can produce more, produce less, that sort of thing. And so if there's a smaller number of receptors, we call this down regulation. As a result, a cell is less sensitive because there won't be as many channels to open um, by this hormone. Conversely, we have up regulation. And so in this case, we're creating or we've got more receptors on a, on a cell. And that means the cell will be extremely sensitive um, because there's many places that can be active, many places on the cell that can um, be activated by this, by this hormone. Now, the mechanism of action or how do they work or how do they stimulate things is, is different. So steroid hormones, they don't need a receptor. They just go across the membrane. Remember, they're fat-soluble. Okay, 
Once they do that, notice that the receptor is actually here inside the protein. So they go inside and then they bind to a receptor inside the actual cell. Okay. Once this happens, this is going to activate DNA inside the cell and then it'll form something called messenger RNA, which results in the formation of a new protein and then something else might happen. Okay. And some, the, the formation or what might happen is we form enzymes, we form structural or even regulatory proteins. Non-steroid hormones, on the other hand, are different and they are uh, they, they work via G proteins. So for example, hormone binds to the receptor, right? That causes, uh, generally speaking, um, GDP leaves, a GTP comes in, alpha and GTP leave the beta gamma subunit, and they go and they activate another protein. Okay. So this is just one example. So, rem so you could think of that alpha GTP subunit as a key and this is that key turns on adenylate cyclase and adenylate cyclase is an enzyme. And what it does is it creates, um, CAMP, cyclic AMP from ATP. And then that cyclic AMP can then activate protein kinase A. Okay. And so when, when we activate these proteins, we can activate enzymes. We can cause membranes to become more or less permeable because remember, um, a G protein can also ultimately open a, uh, an ion channel can also result in protein synthesis. So some of these are the same, some of these are different, but the way that, um, we form them or that these, these hormones work is, is very different.